Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth video in the Fanic Focus series. In the previous videos we learned how to read various information from the controller using focus. Today we're going to be learning how to set information in the controller. <laughs> Continuing on from where we left off in the last video, we are going to be learning more about program manipulation. First, we will read a list of programs from the controller, and then we will use that list to activate one of the programs. While the previous videos demonstrated relatively simple processes, reading a list of programs from the controller involves making multiple focus calls. First, we need to get the number of files that are in that directory. We also need to give focus some information for it to be able to give us a program list. Once that is done, we can finally request the program list from the controller. The CNC read PDF subdirn function will be used to get the number of files in the currently selected directory. And the CNC read PDF all dir function will be used to get the program list information. The CNC read PDF subdirn function takes three arguments. The first is the focused handle. The second is a directory where our programs will be stored, and the third is an instance of the ODB PDF N fill structure, which tells us the number of files and subdirectories contained in the directory. The next function call is the CNC read PDF alder function, and it takes four arguments. The first is a focus handle, followed by the number of programs we want to read and then we need to feed in two different focus structures. The first structure we need to give it is the IDB PDF ADER structure. We will need to fill this structure in before we pass it to our function call. This will tell the focus server what directory we want to read, which file number we want to read, the output size format, and the program list format we want it to use. The next structure we need to give our function is an instance of the ODB PDF ADER structure. We don't need to fill anything out for this structure, but this is where the information returned from the structure will be stored. This structure contains what kind of file we are reading, the last modified date of the file, the file size, the name and comment of the file, a process timestamp, and various attributes such as file permissions. We are only going to be dealing with the name and comment in this video. Now that we know what we need, let's get to some code. This series has covered a range of functions, so to keep everything organized, I have created two classes. A FANIC class, which will store our connection function, and a CNC program class that will store all the functions related to our programs. The CNC program class will be referenced from within the function class. I'm going to create a function inside the CNC program class that returns a dictionary with strings for both the keys and the value. We will also pass in the focus handle so that we don't need to obtain one. I will then create a new dictionary and call it prog list. This is where we will store our program names and comments to be returned at the end of the function. We will then create an object and call it dir to read. This is going to be the directory that we want to read the programs from. You may want to make this a setting and allow it to be changed in your actual application. I will just initialize this to CNC mem user path one, which is the default location for programs on most machines. Next, I will create a short called file num and set it to one. This will be the number of programs we read when we call the focus function later. Now we need to get the number of files contained inside that directory. We will be using the CNC read PDF subdirn function to get this. First, we will create an instance of the ODB PDF and fill structure. This will hold the number of files and subdirectories contained inside the currently selected directory. In the CNC read PDF subdirn function, we will pass our handle, the currently selected directory, and the structure we just created. If all goes well, this function will return the information we need. Now we need to check the return code to make sure it's zero. If it isn't, we will write an error to the console and return null. We also need to create two different structures. The first is the ODB PDF ADER structure. We will create this and leave it as is. Then we need to create an instance of the IDB PDF ADER structure. 
we will need to provide information to this structure to enable focus to give us the information we need. First, we will set the path to the directory we want to read. The rec num will be set to zero. We will change this later. Size kind, we are going to set to two, which represents kilobyte. And type will be set to one. This will enable the function to return the name, comment, and process timestamp. What we want to do is read all the files inside the current directory. We will read each file one at a time and then store them inside the dictionary we created at the top of this function. We create a loop and use the file num field from the ODB, PDF, and fill structure to tell it how many times to loop. Inside our loop, we will call the CNC read PDF alder function and pass in our handle the number of files we want to read, in this case one, and the two structures we just created. We check the return code, and if it's not zero, we write an error and return null. If everything went well, we check to see if the data kind is equal to one, which represents a file. If it is, we read the name and the comment from the file and store it in our dictionary. In order to read the next file in the directory, we need to increase the recnum field of the IDB PDF ADER structure and let the loop continue. Once this loop is finished, we should have all the program names and comments stored in the dictionary. Once we have retrieved all the programs, we can return the dictionary. In the main function, we have the code to connect to the FANUC and return a handle to us. Let's test out our new function. I will create a variable and call it prog list and set it to the output of our get program list function. We need to pass the focus handle in. Next, I will create an index variable and put a for each loop to loop through the dictionary and write the output to the console. We'll have it display an index number, name, and comment. I will run the program and if everything goes well, we will see a list of programs displayed. As you can see, the list of programs matches the list from the FANIC controller. Now that we have obtained a list of programs, we can go on to the next step and activate one of the programs. To activate programs, we will be using the function CNC PDF select main. This function isn't too difficult. We need a focus handle and the program we want to activate. A couple of important notes about this function. The first is that we will need the full path of the program, not just the program name. Secondly, this function call will only be successful if the CNC is in edit mode or mem mode. Mem mode is often referred to as auto mode. I will start off by creating a new function and calling it activate main program. It will return a boolean which will indicate success or failure to activate the main program. And we will pass in two arguments. The first is the focus handle and the second is the name of the program. As usual, we will check to make sure that the handle isn't zero, and if it is, we will return false. I am going to create a string for the directory where the programs are stored. Again, you may wish to make this configurable and pass it in, but I'm going to hard code it this time just for the sake of simplicity. Now we can include the CNC PDF select main function and pass in the handle along with the directory path and the file name concatenated together. We will assign the return code to underscore ret so that we can ensure the call was successful. If ret is not equal to ew underscore ok, then we will return false. Otherwise, we will return true. In the main function, we will do a console.writeline and ask the user in to input an index number for the program they want to activate. We will add a console.readline to get their input. You will want to add some error checking and input validation to ensure that they entered a valid number, but I'm going to leave it out to make it easier to follow along. I will then call the activate main program method and pass in the handle and the program name. To get the program name from the prog list dictionary, I am using the element at method and using int.parse on the user input to convert it to an integer. For instance, if the user inputs the number 1, which in this instance relates to the program test, I will use element at to get the dictionary key at index 1. 
again, you will want to actually verify that the user has input a valid number and not a letter or something else. The activate main program function returns a boolean that will be stored in the activate success variable. We can check the results and output a message upon success or failure with console.writeLine. Now let's run our code to see what we get. As you can see, we get a list of programs and then we are asked to input the number associated with the program that we want to activate. I'm going to put 4. As you can see, the T prog N program was activated. As a bonus for this episode, I'm going to include a function that isn't in the inventcom documentation. It's a simple method that only takes a focus handle. The function is called cnc underscore start. This function enables the active program to be started right from your software. There are a couple notes about this function before we continue. 1. This function may or may not work on your control. Since the function isn't documented, there's no way to determine which controls this works on and whether or not any special options are needed for it to function properly. And 2. This method will fail if there are any errors on the CNC or if the CNC is not in auto mode. With that being said, I haven't personally run into any machines that this hasn't worked on, but your results may vary. To start, I will create a start program function inside the CNC programs class that will return a boolean indicating success or failure. The function will take a focus handle as its only argument. As usual, we will first check that the handle isn't zero, and then we will call the CNC start function and pass in our handle. We will check the return code to see if it's successful and return true if it is, otherwise we return false. In the main function, we will go into the if statement block that checks for the success of the activated program. I will add a console.write line and ask the user if they want to start the program. If they enter Y, then we will call our function. Otherwise, I will display a message telling them that they can start the program manually by pressing cycle start on the operator panel. If you need to copy the code, go ahead and pause this video. Otherwise, you can go to my GitHub and download the complete code for today's video. Let's try our code. We're going to activate program 4, which is tprogn, and it's going to ask us if we want to start. We are going to enter Y, and as you can see, the program is currently running. Switch to the subprogram, and then back to our main program. I know we covered a lot in this video, but I wanted to get into some more complex focus material. It is important that I'm putting out quality videos that are helpful to people, so please let me know in the comments if you like these longer, more complex videos, or if you prefer the shorter, simpler videos. As usual, please subscribe if you find these videos helpful, leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you for watching. Until next time.